Hello folks, and welcome to a bit of a different review this time. Now, I, I know we've taken a look at some relatively old figures on here in the past, but I think, and the other guys can correct me if I'm wrong here, I think these will be the oldest ones we've looked at so far. These are two Hasbro Scout class figures. We've got Armorhide and Hardtop. And uh, these guys were originally released as part of the Transformers Cybertron toy line. Uh, so the molds themselves are from around 2005-2006. But these particular repaints are from the 2007 movie toy line, along with a bunch of other molds from Cybertron, Energon, and Classics. Now, the only reason these guys are of any particular interest on this channel is because of their size. Back in the day, Legend Scale wasn't quite the same as what it is now. If I bring in uh, this Infernocon here, this is sort of the size that the Legends were back in this uh, era. And then, of course, they're... Engineering was a lot simpler, very simple transformations, uh, not very well articulated. So Scout Class uh, was more like what we have now with modern third party legends, and I suppose the Hasbro Core Class that we have at the minute is really the spiritual successor to the Scout Class. The problem with these guys back then is that, as had really always been the case up to that point, Hasbro didn't really care about scale. Now I know not everyone is a scale freak, but even as a kid, I find it a little bit weird having a truck that is half the size of, you know, your deluxe car bots uh, and such. But as you'll see when it comes to the size comparisons, these guys fit in really nicely with modern third party legends. Right, that's probably enough history. Let's take a look at them and we will start with Armor Height here. He is quite a stocky little bot. Uh, I'd say he definitely took some inspiration from G1 Huffer in terms of his design, uh, mainly because he was actually repainted into G1 Huffer for a Balkan exclusive, and this particular version of him has officially been repurposed as Shattered Glass Huffer. His colour scheme is mostly grey steel, you know, we've got the black for the body and legs, and then these two shades of grey elsewhere. Uh, he does also have a lot of yellow and silver paint for highlights. You know, that truck grill is all painted. In the face, windows on the truck cab there. His original version was blue and grey. Uh, quite bright shade of blue, I think. Uh, I honestly prefer this look, uh, but I would still like to get that original version at some point. Right, his design is actually really clean. There's no real kibble to speak of. Uh, in terms of articulation, his head is on a ball joint. Now, this ball joint did get quite loose on my copy, so I have tightened it. And he has rotation at the shoulders, and a really quite pathetic hinge. But you can use the transformation hinges if you want to get more range out of the arms. And he has ball jointed elbows. I guess you could consider this an arching back. Uh, and then he's got ball jointed hips. Quite a deep knee hinge. The uh, left knee on mine is a little bit loose, but not too bad. He can still stand up just fine. And then no ankle uh, tilt to the side, but there's a hinge that gives you a little bit of forward and backward movement. Now, most of the joints are pretty solid, apart from those couple that I mentioned. I'm not sure how I tighten the knee. Maybe get some kicky for that, but the head, you can do with a bit of super glue on the ball joint. He comes with a blaster, which you can hold in his either hand, and then also a cyber key, which was the gimmick with the Transformers Cybertron toys. Now he has a slot in his back, which you can plug this into to reveal his huge rack of missiles. <laughs> um, the panel is spring-loaded, so it won't stay open if you don't have the key in. Uh, you can store the key in the blaster. Which is, you know, key storage isn't something that a lot of Cybertron toys had, so I do actually appreciate that quite a bit. Now, Armorhide himself has no faction insignia. Uh, he's got a Sector 7 one on his key as gun. He was an Autobot in on his box and in the Titan comics. Uh, the key, confusingly, has a Decepticon symbol on the back. Uh, not painted there, you can sort of see it molded in. Although I think the only reason for that is because... All the other cyber keys have a raised uh, molded in insignia on the front and they wanted a flat surface to print this new logo on. 
So I think that's the only reason he's got a Decepticon 1 on there. But who knows? That's my uh, theory. But yeah, because of that flexibility in terms of faction insignia, you can really use him for whatever you want. He could be an Autobot, he can be a Shattered Glass Autobot, he can be a Decepticon, based on the key, and with, you know, if you have a human faction, maybe you can incorporate that with the Sector 7 logos. That pretty much covers it for Armhide's robot mode. So, now, for Hardtop. Now, I don't believe Hardtop is an homage to anyone in particular in terms of design, uh, but it did get repainted into Swindle as part of the Cybertron line, and this version has officially been repurposed into Shattered Glass Beachcomber. Now, he's got remarkably human proportions uh, in terms of his design here. He's got a little bit more kibble, you know, with the, the wheels and the arm parts there uh, than Armorhide had. But it's still pretty well managed, doesn't really get in the way. His colour scheme is mostly this shade of grey and black. You've got the military green. And then, of course, he's got the same colours of highlights as Armorhide has. He's got the silver and the yellow. So, thematically, he works quite well with Armorhide. Uh, if you want to use them as part of the same faction, or reason together, whatever. His original colour scheme was, I think it was light blue and purple? Which is uh, certainly more eye-catching, but maybe a bit much. I think I actually prefer this duller colour scheme, I guess. In terms of his articulation, he has a just a rotation at the base of the neck there. And he's got a hinge, and ball joint at the shoulder, so quite a lot of range there. Nice deep elbow bend. I guess he has an ab crunch if you untab the uh, waist there. And of course waist swivel. Ball joint at hips. And he has ball joint at knees, although they really only like function as a uh, hinge. Now, Hardtop has a rifle, which can be plugged into either hand, and now his cyber key gimmick, if you take in the key and plug it into the rifle, it becomes a longer rifle. It's a simple gimmick, but uh, I quite like it. <laughs> uh, it will stay extended if you remove the key, uh, although Hardtop doesn't have anywhere to store it, so you can leave it in if you want or just set it to the side. Hardtop was a Decepticon in both Cybertron and the Titan movie comics. Although, again, his only faction symbol on him is this Sector 7 one. And he has the same key, as, uh, same key mold as Armor Hide with Sector 7 and Decepticon on the back. So, you know, you can use him as Decepticon Hardtop, you can use him as Shatterglass Beachcomber. If you want, he and Armor Hide could maybe be part of a human faction, if uh, that's something you're interested in. But that's it for Hardtop. So for some size comparisons, here's Infernocon Thrash, who I think is a good enough representation of the old style legends. And then here is Core Class Vertebrake. You can sort of see they're in the same sort of size bracket there. And then a Deluxe, there's Siege Brunt. There's Hot Soldiers Optimus Prime, who will be more relevant in alt mode, for arm height at least. There they are with Iron Factory, Megatron, and Slipstream. Now, if you are using these guys as Shattered Glass versions of Huffer and Beachcomber, they might be a little bit too big for Iron Factory, Shattered Glass, Optimus Prime. At least in his unarmored form. With his armor on, that's maybe a better scale. Of course, might still be too big for your other Shattered Glass stuff, but... Uh, it's up to you at the end of the day. And lastly, the Constance, Iron Factory Runabout, and the Lego Stormtrooper. Now to get them transformed, we'll start with Armahide again. So, set his blaster off to the side, and then rotate the head, and collapse it into this weak gap. Then, fold the arms back on their hinges like this, rotate the elbows, and then fold those on back so that the arms peg together. Now I want to flip the feet inside the legs and wiggle the knees along that hinge 
so that the lower legs can peg together. Now you'll just want to collapse the waist and legs until that cab section all tabs together like so. Then last thing you do is bring in the gun and tab it into the trailer hitch. And that's armor hide done. Now for hard top. Again, we'll just leave the blaster to the side. Alright, bend the elbows all the way up. Fold down this chest panel and it rotate the waist around before untabbing it from the body. And then fold the torso around like so. Alright, use the shoulder hinges to bring the arms around like this. And then there's a little tab, top of the shoulders will tab in beside the head there. So I know they're in place. And bring down these wheels. Uh, just tap those legs together, fold them around, and there are little slots on the bottom of the feet that will line up with the. Uh, doors. And last thing is to do, pop those wheels back and then bring in the gun. That will just take into the, the top there. So there they are. Uh, very simple transformations but that was always the case with Sky Class figures really. Uh, both vehicles actually look pretty good. Uh, Armour's truck in particular it's really nice actually. The only thing you can pick out about it uh, that I can see is these hands at the back here are kind of visible. Uh, otherwise, a uh, really neat little cab over truck. Hardtop uh, isn't quite as good as Buggy. Uh, I mean, ironically, it's not even a hardtop. <laughs> He's got a little seat in there, uh, but you can kind of see the robot mode head. Uh, the military deco, I think, quite suits this design. And then, of course, you can also access both of their gimmicks in these modes still. So hard top, just need to move it to the side so that it has clearance. Uh, armor hide, you may need to unplug this to get the key in, but the slot is still accessible there. Now, if you've been paying attention to the scale in these modes, you'll notice that... These guys aren't exactly in scale with each other. Um, bring in a constant run amok here. You can kind of see that, you know, even with him, armor height is a bit too small and hardtop is a bit too big to scale with. Sort of a standard car. If I bring in a minibot car like Cliff Jumper, I think, you know, that works a bit better with armor height. And uh, hardtop really only makes sense with maybe a deluxe class like Brunt here. Let me just arrange them so you can see them all. Yeah, you know, uh, he's only makes sense next to Deluxe Classes as this kind of dune buggy vehicle. But again, it, if your collection is as mismatched as mine, it'll not matter. Uh, the robot mode is where most modern third-party companies put the emphasis in the scale. Uh, so, you know, things like the Seeker Jets aren't going to scale with your cars, so... It's, it's, it's up to you <laughs> whether that scales for you. Now, one thing I noticed was really needed by armor hide to truck mode is if I bring in Hot Soldiers, Optimus Prime, those guys scale really nicely with each other. You know, those truck cabs are essentially identical uh, in terms of scale, at least. You know, almost exactly the same length and width. If I bring in Optimus's trailer, now there's no real way to attach this to the trailer hitch. Maybe you can come up with some kind of attachment that works. I haven't, obviously. But you can kind of just set it on there and you can, you know, a bit of a loose connection. Might need to raise it up a bit if you were gonna do that, but you know, I thought it was a neat observation to make. But yeah, Armahide, like this, this scale was made for him, honestly. He's finally found a, a place where he fits. And then lastly, there's Thrash, Vertebrae, and the Lego Stormtrooper again. So, there we have Armor Hide and Hardtop, or Shattered Glass, Huffer, and Beachcomber, if that's how you want to use them. 
Now, I've had these guys since they were first released, so I didn't originally get them to go with the Legends scale stuff, uh, but I would seriously recommend them, uh, especially if you need more Shattered Glass characters. They're fun, if nothing else. Uh, I personally love Armor Hide all around, uh, Hardtop 2, but not quite as much. Uh, there are a whole bunch of other 2007 Scout Class figures that later got repurposed as, as Shattered Glass versions of characters. Uh, I think I have all but two of them. If you found this video interesting and would like to see some of these other ones, I can certainly put them up if it's something you'd be interested in seeing. But anyway, that's all from me for now. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out the other stuff on the channel, and goodbye.